Does being a local real estate agent really matter? Now look, I've benefited from this one just as much as I've lost on this one. It's the myth of being that local agent, agent who lives in a certain town is somehow better suited to sell your house than one that lives in a certain neighboring town. In fairness, this didn't always used to be the myth. It used to be very true. And we're going to talk about what has changed to make being that local agent an asset when selling a house to a factor that doesn't really matter at all today. And we're also going to talk about the things that really do make a difference and the things that a homeowner should really be focused on real quick. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovered investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then note I'm here to help. Now, many people, let alone agents, can't remember this. The MLS, it used to be published in a book. It would be delivered to each agent once a month. Now, the reason why I remember it is because my mom was a real estate agent back in the 80s and 90s. Now, do you miss the timeline for that submission to get into that book at the beginning of the month? Then sorry, tough cookies. Better luck next month. This is when being a local agent mattered so much because the market wasn't an open and transparent market like it is today. An agent being in the office with another agent who just listed 123 Main Street in the middle of the month could be a huge leg up because all the other agents and all the other offices won't really know about it for another couple of weeks when it was, again, printed in the book and delivered to their desk. Yes, there were broker opens that agents would do. And by the way, this is why broker opens were created. It was to get a new listing out in front of the real estate community before the house would hit the MLS, which again was a book, believe it or not. Agents would have buyer caravans every Tuesday going from house to house, eating and drinking whatever spread was put on by that listing agent. Now the agent would then run back to their office and start calling all of those prospective buyers. That's when the local agent mattered so much. The MLS being online, it changed everything. It's because the agent isn't really reaching out to the prospective buyer with a listing they don't know about. Agents, for the most part, find out about new listings at the exact same time that the consumer does. And that's when it's listed on the MLS. The consumer won when the real estate agent lost the ability to be the gatekeeper and the arbiter of the information. The local agent lost. They lost really big, actually. Me, knowing Johnny Joe, the agent, it doesn't really help in any way when it comes to marketing and selling a house today. Johnny isn't showing my listing because he likes me as a friend. He's showing my listing because his buyers reached out and said, Hey, look, hey, Jeff, I want to see 123 Main Street. It looks nice, and I just really want to take a look. Now, where agent relationships can make a big difference is in helping put together a deal in a hot market. More helpful for the buyer than the seller. In the end, the idea that us agents have significant sway over someone making the choice of which is most likely the largest purchase that they have ever made, it's kind of absurd. Now, don't get me wrong, many agents, they like to believe this and their desire and their need to feel more important than they really are. But this is the truth. It's the buyer that's making the decision, not the agent swaying them either way. An agent's job is to present the facts, help put together a strategy, enact that strategy, negotiate to the best of their ability, and then manage the transaction. Or the middle then, plain and simple. One last thing about an agent being a local agent based on where their office is, I know of so many agents that live far from their office. In my market here in Massachusetts, you're gonna see time and time again, an agent having their office being in Boston when they actually live in New Hampshire. It just doesn't matter, plain and simple. So what really matters when choosing an agent to sell your house? Well, number one, an agent's knowledge of the market conditions. This is very different from knowing who the first great kindergarten teacher is. Knowing things like past sales levels, current inventory levels, sales and inventory trends, and months of inventory can be the difference maker when crafting a strategy that will ultimately help a seller net more money on their house. But it doesn't just stop there. Knowing the trends of what's going on in neighboring towns can be enormously significant as well. And these local one town agents are going to struggle with this because they only focus on that one town. This is so important because home buyers now search a lot larger of a radius than they once did. And this too comes down to the free flow of information. Buyers are able to do more research easier than they could just 30 years ago and get more comfortable about a town quicker and about these different areas a lot quicker. Again, back in the day, all of this information would come from, ding, 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 the local agent, not anymore. But knowing what is going on in the neighborhood town can help you ensure that your marketing and price strategy is correct. As a great example, let's say inventory is starting to stack in your neighboring town with prices stagnating. 
If it's happening there, then there's a good chance that it's coming to a market near you. In this case, being a little more aggressive on pricing could be a huge win. The local agent serving one or two markets is actually at a disadvantage to the agent that works a larger geographic area. Number two, digital marketing expertise. In today's digital world, a real estate agent's online marketing skills can be far more valuable than the local knowledge of the best watering hole in the town. Leveraging social media, online listing platforms, and targeted digital advertising to reach potential buyers is paramount to a seller helping maximize their sales price. Other factors that are ingredients into much of this marketing are high quality virtual tours and professional photography that ensures your property is receiving maximum exposure and attracting a wider audience. I also think that every house and seller, they're not equal. Some properties don't need all the ritzy marketing exposure. A great example of this is maybe an investment property where tenants are living in the units or a complete gut rehab of a property. There isn't necessarily an approach where it's a one size that fits all. Keep that in mind. Number three, skills and expertise matter more. You know the saying, it's not the years of life, but the life in the years that matter the most? There are no truer words, and then there are no truer words that can be spoken when it comes to choosing an agent to represent you in what is most likely your largest asset. It's not the years that the agent has been in the business, but the amount of sales the agent has done while they've been in the business. Quick story. Now, I remember driving the car with my dad, and there was a really nice BMW with some license plate that alluded to the guy. He was a realtor. Now, my dad knew who he was because he was in his office, and I said something along the lines of, wow, that guy must be really successful. Yeah, he had a nice car, but he lived with mom and dad. Success, it leaves clues. It makes no sense to gamble your largest asset or someone that is new to the business or someone who does this as a part-time job or hobby. You need to demand someone that is experienced, someone that has a team of professionals that works with them to help ensure a smooth process for you. It comes down to not wanting to be someone's guinea pig. You don't want to be the learning lesson. I get an agent needs to start somewhere, but any screw up could cost you thousands if not ends of thousands of dollars. Number four, effective communication and availability. Nothing is worse than feeling lost in the weeds or in such a monumental investment. Communication is key in any and all real estate transaction. You need a dedicated and responsive agent that can efficiently manage communication with you as well as all your buyers who are interested in your property. Now, a part-time agent or an agent that's, well, the primary caregiver to kids they might not be able to provide the attention needed to ensure a successful sale. The ability to promptly address inquiries, provide updates, and coordinate showings is more important than an agent's physical proximity to a property. Now, number five, it's advanced technology and tools. The use of advanced technology and tools has revolutionized the real estate industry, diminishing the importance of an agent's physical location. Now, all agents can utilize cutting-edge software for virtual home tours, 3D floor plans, and drone photography, which provides potential buyers with an immersive and comprehensive view of the property from anywhere in the world. Additionally, online transaction management systems allow for seamless and efficient handling of documents and communications, ensuring a smooth process for both sellers and buyers. Now, the technological capabilities of an agent can significantly enhance the marketing and sale of your house, making local presence, well, less relevant. Your agent's ability to understand technology will make a world of difference throughout the transaction. Now, I'm not that old, a couple gray hairs on the head, or well, more than a couple, but I remember the days when we'd actually have to drive to the seller's house in order to get a wet copy signature, right? The hard copy on the purchase and sale agreement. No more, that's all done online through DocuSign or other tools like that. Your agent's ability to understand technology will make a world of difference throughout the transaction. It will matter in the marketing, the communication, and the management of the transaction. Again, I've been on the losing side of the local agent myth just as much as I've been on the winning side. I have people that will barely interview me since my office just happens to be in their town. While I'm the best guy for the job, there's no doubt about that, it's not because I'm the local agent. Do your homework. Work with someone you feel is competent, knows the market, and is coming with a selling strategy that will help you achieve your goals. Factoring in their office location, that's pretty much worthless. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Whether you're looking to buy in Massachusetts or anywhere else in the country, 
then it would be a pleasure to help you. I work with some really great folks, really amazing real estate agents all throughout the country that I know would do a phenomenal job for you. I'm happy to make an introduction at no cost to you, obviously. You can find all my contact information in the description below right down there, or you can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com. Until next time.